gather ye friends around your flickering campfires and listen to continuing tales of daring, horror, and high adventure from the worn pages of Mythdery. Ah, Mythdery. It's almost exactly the same as history, except it's not boring. This time we continue the tale of Ragnar Lothbrok, dear listener. The thoroughly real historical character that definitely existed. He's the Viking King Arthur. When last we saw our hero, he was about to marry a peasant farmer girl called Cracker. Except she's not a peasant farmer girl. She is, in fact, the last surviving member of the Vanir. A tribe of humans who carry the blood of gods. She is a super big deal. If this were a Disney movie, she'd be the princess. Her real name is Aslaug. She is the daughter of Sigurd Dragonslayer and Brunhild the Valkyrie. Who were themselves mighty, mighty heroes. But who are we? And what would our heroic powers be? Save it for the next actual podcast episode, Pear Bear. We've got a show to do. But Bilbo, how do we introduce ourselves whilst also getting straight to the story? It is a conundrum we have yet to fully answer, dear Uncle Bob Bob. Perhaps Tombo knows. I do not. All I know is that this is yet another episode of... The Silly History Boys Show! Many years have passed since last we met our heroes, dear listener. And in those years, Aslaug... Cracker. Same thing! Aslaug has borne Ragnar many sons. Four, to be exact. Ivar, Bjorn, Thitzirk, and Ronvald. The eldest, Ivar, is known as the Boneless because he has no bones in his legs. Where there is normally bone, there is only gristle. Despite his lack of leg bones, Ivar grows to be tall, handsome, and the leader of his brothers. He is carried around on a stretcher by some Viking warriors who, for the purposes of this week's episode, will never speak. Ragnar's two sons from his first wife, Thora, Eric and Agnar, have grown up and become great Viking leaders in their own right. Ivar, not to be outdone, leads his other brothers on a raid to a place called Hvitbo. Which might be Whitby, a seaside town on the northeast coast of England. You might remember it from our Halloween special a couple of years ago. Uh, the one with the scary ghost nun, yes? Whitby is a popular tourist destination these days. Some say it's ruined Abbey inspired Bram Stoker to write Dracula. But back in history times, Whitby was not a fan of tourists. Especially tourists with massive axes who stole everything and then set you on fire. To deal with these unwanted ruffians, Whitby had a special weapon. Ivar, brother, the scouts have returned. And what news do they bring, Bjorn? Dark news, brother. It appears Vitabo has strong defenses. Magic giant cows. What? Why has that got the scouts so worried? Magic giant cows are commonplace in this time period, which is early medieval Scandinavia for those not paying attention. A fine point, brother Vitzirk, and a lovely callback to last week's episode. But these particular cows can moo really powerfully, and a man who hears their terrible moos may have his head explode. What? Really? Well, all right, maybe not the head exploding bit, but the men are all terrified of the mooing for some reason and can't fight. Looks like we better get down there, Ivar. Certainly does. Can I come, Ivar? I'll sort those cows out. <laughs> no, Ronvald, so young and violent. You are too young to join a full-on battle. You will stay here and guard the ships. But I want to do some fighting. You'll get your chance one day, little brother. But today, you guard the ships. Aww. Now then, my brothers, lean in conspiratorially. Ivor the Boneless has a plan, and it's a banger. Leaving Ronvald to guard the ships with a small group of warriors, the rest of the sons of Ragnar make their way to Viterbo. Upon seeing the Viking army approaching, the people of Viterbo unleash the terrible magic bulls. <laughs> Vitzirk, hand me my bow. What? That's your plan? Yep. Vitzirk hands Ivar his bow. A bow so mighty only a son of Ragnar Lothbrok could draw it. There's no way you're killing those bulls from here. (laughs) You wanna bet? I'll stake my reputation on it. It'll be a rare shot if you manage it. Well, a medium rare one anyway. 
I'm willing to risk it. Ivar draws back his mighty bow and lets loose two arrows. Both arrows strike true, and the giant magic bowls collapse to the ground. I'd say that was well done. <laughs> Before we run out of puns, we best order the men into battle. And charge! Meanwhile, back at the ships... Well, this is boring. My Lord Roggenwald, guarding the ships is very important. You never know when the enemy could appear. Have they appeared yet? No. Now? No. Now? No. What about now? My Lord, I promise I will tell you the moment they arrive. Aww. All my older brothers get to have all the fun. I bet Bjorn's setting something or someone on fire right now. I want to set something or someone on fire. There'll be plenty of time to set things and people on fire when you're older, my lord. After all, you're only twelve. Exactly. I'm basically a grown-up. I should be in the heat of the action. My axe lusts for the blood of my enemies. My lord, now- Shut up! I will not wait any longer. Men! We head to battle! And so Ronvald leads his small group of warriors away from the ships and towards the fighting. With the giant magic bulls now dead, Ivar and his warriors are laying about Hvitbo's defenders, and the melee is brutal and bloody, as usual. This is more like it. Look, that guy just had both of his arms chopped off, but brilliant! That poor fellow. My lord, I really don't think this is a good idea. Now come, let, let, let us get back to the ship. No way! I'm here to fight and win glory! Now who should I slay first? You! Come here and taste my axe! That one's got a bow, my lord. I think... I don't care what you think. Your character doesn't even have a name. I do have a name. And my name is... <laughs> what? What's a stupid name? Oh, I see. You died. Stop shooting the arrows and fight me properly! Yeah. I am Ronvald Runderson and I demand- uh, You shot me! Why didn't anyone tell me battles were dangerous? And thus ends the saga of Ronvald Ragnarsson. There's a lesson in his tale, children. That lesson is, do what you're told or you'll get shot with an arrow. All of your lessons involve getting shot with arrows. Spare the arrows, spoil the child. That's what they say. Yeah, I don't think they say that at all. Have you done your homework, Hazmat? Not yet. Well, well, well. Bob, Bob, fetch my quiver. Ah, yoink! Perhaps we should get back to the story. The death of Ronvald enraged the rest of the brothers and they made short work of Hvitabo's remaining defenders, who eventually fled. The sons of Ragnar gave chase, and upon their return it was said that each man who wished to became a killer outside Hvitabo. Oh, that's nice. It gets better. Upon returning to Hvitabo, they took all the money and all the movable property. Meaning anything not nailed down. And they burned every house and broke down all the walls. Oh yes, for a second there I'd forgotten that our heroes are history people, and therefore awful. Now whilst all this has been going on, Ragnar, titular character, has been at the court of King Einstein, who was at that time the ruler of all Sweden. Ragnar, there you are. Greetings to you, King Einstein. Your hospitality continues to impress. My men and I have never been so well looked after. Oh, it gives me great pleasure to know that you are comfortable, my friend. Now, tell me, have you thought any further about marrying my daughter? My lord, uh, I must refuse. I am already married. To a peasant girl? I'm sure your cracker is very nice, man, but, but did you not say that her parents were simple farmers? My daughter, Ingeborg, has veins stuffed to the brim with royal blood. Marry her and Sweden is yours when I die. 
Also, she is, like, well fit. Smoking honey. Like, totally cherry. I do appreciate huge tracts of land. Allow me the winter to think it over. Very well. Return to me in the summer and give me your answer. And so, Ragnar sailed home with his men for the winter. As they sailed towards Ragnar's lands, he made his warriors swear an oath that they would keep King Eystein's proposal secret, and that if any let slip the truth, they would pay with nothing less than their lives. Upon arriving home, Ragnar was met by a very pregnant Kraka. Wife, you should not have walked all the way down here in your condition. Why, you're due in a day. Don't be ridiculous, Ragnar. I'll go where I like. Now tell me, what is the news, my love? There is a look in Kraka's eye that makes Ragnar pause. What? what? I asked, what is the news, my love? You have been gone the whole summer at the court of the Swedish king. Surely there is news. Um, nothing I can think of right now. What say we get the ship unloaded and get you to a safe warm fire? So thoughtful. Later that evening, as Ragnar and Kraka dine in the longhouse... So tell me, what is the news, my love? Um, again, why, for... I can't think of any news. Why do you ask? Oh, no reason. Just making conversation. Well, it has been a long day, and I am weary. To bed. As you will it, my lord. As they lay in bed on the verge of sleep, Cracker asked one more time. So, uh, what is the news, my love? By the gods, woman! I have told you there is no news. I have no news for you. Oh, really? Then perhaps I will tell you some news. And what might this news be? There is news that a famous warrior might be marrying the daughter of the King of Sweden. Ah, I, 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 well, I, I, I wouldn't call that news. It is when that warrior is already married. Uh-oh. You would set me aside just for the contents of a woman's veins. Is royal blood so important to you, Ragnar Lothbrok? Who told you about this? Oh yes, that's what we should be focusing on. Who told me the secret you would have kept from me? My men swore on pain of death. Worry not. None of your men are oath breakers. I have ways far more subtle than treachery to find out secrets. I was told by three birds. Oh. But now, you shall have a secret of mine. My name is not Cracker, Ragnar Lothbrok. That was the name given to me by those that stole me. My real name is Aslaug, daughter of Sigurd Dragonslayer and Brunhilde the Valkyrie. In my veins flows the blood of gods. What? Really? Yes, really. I hate to ask, but... Do you have any proof? As Laug floats into the air, all Scarlet Witch style, lightning crackles from her fingers. Proof? Okay, I believe you. You will have your proof. The child I carry is a boy. He will be born with a snake in his eye. Thus I prophesy, and thus it shall be. If I tell the truth, you will refuse the King of Sweden's offer. If I lie, you may do as you will. Within a few days, Aslau gives birth, and as she prophesied, it was a boy. A boy with a snake in his eye. They named him Sigurd, after Aslaug's father. Ragnar now knew the truth about Aslaug's lineage, and so he refused King Eystein of Sweden's proposal. King Eystein took the rejection of his daughter rather personally, and declared that he and Ragnar were no longer good chums. And so Ragnar's oldest sons, Eric and Agnar, decided to pay the King of the Swedes a visit. And by visit, we mean they invaded Sweden with a massive army and started raiding. When King Eystein heard about this, he gathered his own massive army and rode out to meet the sons of Ragnar. King Eystein, we have spotted their army. 
The sons of Ragnar Lothbrok lie to the east of this forest. Good. They have less than a third of the troops we have. Let's get all our men ready to fight. We will only send a third out to meet them. But my king, what, why should we do that when we outnumber them so greatly? The sons of Ragnar are tough men. So are their troops. They will think they have the battle all tied up. But that's when the rest of our army comes at them from all sides. <sighs> oh, that is cunning. Do you know what I mean? That is... that is sly. He was a genius, Your Majesty. Oh, that's not all, man. Prepare, Sibylia. A mocking? Surely, surely you cannot mean... Oh, yeah. Prepare the magic giant battle cow! Another one? How many magic giant cows are there in this story? Oh, this is the last one, but <laughs> watch out, because this one is extra magical. How so? When this one moves, men are driven to madness. Well, that is pretty magic. Eric and Agnar are super tough, and being the sons of Ragnar makes them immune to the maddening moves of Sibylia. But their men are all too vulnerable. King Einstein's plan of surrounding the Ragnarsons and mooing them into submission works like a charm. His men charge in on all sides. Agnar is killed in the ensuing melee, and Eric goes berserk. Eventually, he's overcome, subdued, and captured. My lord, K King Einstein, we have taken Eric Ragnarsson prisoner. Unhand me, you dogs! I'll feed you your own feet! Let him go. But my king, he just threatened to eat your own feet. No one will be chowing down on their own feet today, man. Just let him go. Einstein, give me a sword and let's settle this like men. I will have vengeance for Ragnar. He never even got a speaking part. Let there be peace, Eric. Too many have died already, man. Let us end the violence. I offer you a truce and gold. And I will add this. I will marry my daughter to you. Absolutely not. You cannot pay me for my brother. Not with gold. Or with a wife. There's only one way this can be resolved. Bring some spears over here. Stand them up. And then chuck me onto them. Uh, what? You heard me! Get some spears, stand them on up, and just throw me right onto them so that I die from it. It's the only way we can sort all this out. But I just offered you the hand of my daughter in marriage. You'd be the prince of Sweden. Oh, I'm sure it'd be lovely, and I've heard your daughter Ingeborg is an absolute delight, but I'm afraid no. I'll have to choose the spears. But why? This leads to the worst outcome for both of us. Honestly, not a clue. But I'm not the one writing the saga, am I? Please, let my men go free and ask one of them to give Aslo this ring. And then, get some spears, chuck me right on them. I am ready. Um, my, my, my lord, I, am I getting the, getting the spears then? Well, well um, I... I, I guess so. Oh, yes, please. All right. Go get some spears. As my king commands. Bring spears! Spears! Spears are brought. You are absolutely 100% certain that you'd rather be thrown on spears. I am. Nothing will change my mind. Oi, um, what about if we show you how much gold? I mean, you know, look. That is a lot. Of gold. Do you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? Oh, it certainly is, but, but no, I am resolute. Death by spears for me, please. Men, make ready. The men make ready. Ready, sir? Last chance. Ingeborger is like just there, man. Look, she's smiling and waving. Gosh, she really is stunning. But no, no, spears all the way. I choose death by spears. Okay. Men, throw him on. No, wait, I've changed my mind. Ah! And thus, two more sons of Ragnar met their end. Agnar fell in battle, and Eric, well, he was lobbed on a bunch of spears at his own request. This is a weird story. 
I know, right? Dude, it's going to get so much weirder in just a few moments. Einstein is as good as his word and lets Eric and Agnar's men go free. They return home and arrive at almost exactly the same time as Ivar and the rest of the Ragnarsons are getting back from her Vitebo. Mother! Mother, where is father? He has yet to return from his summer raiding, Ivar. How went your raid on her Vitebo? As Ivar opens his mouth to respond, the door to the longhouse bursts open. My lords, my lady, dire news from Sweden. Eric and Agnar are dead. <gasps> oh no! Agnar died in battle, and Eric was thrown on spears for no reason. <gasps> oh no! This is most unfortunate. I too bring dire news. <gasps> oh no! What dire news do you bring, Ivar? Ronvald, youngest and most impetuous of the Ragnar sons, is dead. <gasps> oh no! Gasp! Oh no! Mother! What? He never did what he was told and never listened. So, in many ways, it was inevitable. I reckon Agnar, however. I demand vengeance for my stepsons! But you're kidding me. Are you... are you nuts? We, we are not attacking the King of Sweden. That guy's got a massive demon cow that moves people to the point of insanity. What can mere men do in the face of such dark magic? His magic is nothing in the face of my magic! Come now, Mother, there's no need to go all Super Saiyan on us. Ivar will break the back of the beast, and Einstein will die. So have I prophesied. Fine, we'll go then, stupid prophecies. And now, for absolutely no discernible reason, I will change my name to Randolin. Mother, are you, um... Okay. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yes. I will just head to Sweden then. Um, Bear Bear? Yes, Bilbo? Is this the actual saga, or have you and your scripts gone completely insane? I swear to you, sweet Bilbo, this is the actual saga. Even the name changey bit? It's Especially the name changey bit. I mean, it's actually theorised in the very brief Google search that I did that Randolin might be Aslaug's war name. Basically, it's like the early medieval version of a gamer tag. Today, it'll be like capital R4, capital N, Delin, Leet 69 or, or something. Anyway... Ivar, his brothers and their massive army make their way to Sweden and slaughter everyone in their path. Eventually, they face King Eystein and his devil cow, Sibelia. Ivar orders his men to bang their weapons against their shields to drown out the sound of Sibelia's terrible moves. Whilst his men protect themselves, Ivar has himself carried to a tree and used it like a giant bow. He knocks two massive arrows on his tree bow and shoots them at the devil cow. <laughs> Arrow hits Sabalia in each eye. The cow moves in demonic fury. As Ivar has his men fling him into the air. With a mighty crunch, Ivar lands on Sabalia's back and snaps the devil cow's spine clean in two. Hey man, you just like totally wiped out my devil cow. Curse you, you boneless dude. Face me. In an unlikely duel. Unlikely, eh? With pleasure. The two combatants enter a dance of death. Except it's not a dance, it's a fight. Of death. Using the utterly non-existent records of this combat, we have accurately reconstructed what might have probably not ever happened. An unlikely duel deconstructed for your listening pleasure. You're welcome, dear listener. You're welcome. I stand. I accept you as king! You do? King of doing my sweet in! Oh, it's totally gnarly blow, Ivar the Bowlers. You should never have thrown my half-brother onto a bunch of spears. He made me do it! Wait, what? Wait, what? What? Why would... Why would... Sorry, why would he do that? That's completely stupid. Didn't you tell him? Yeah, right. That's it. I'm out of here. Check, please. 
And thus, Eystein, the king of the Swedes, was laid low by Ivar the Boneless and his brothers. Having raided much of Sweden and made themselves rich, the Ragnarsons decide to continue their adventure and set out to the Southern Empire. Which historians today think was probably Germany. Ivar's cunning tactics brought the brothers much success, and they sought to push onwards to a city that they had heard was called Rome. But, though the sons of Ragnar had now become mighty Viking chiefs in their own right, Rome was simply too far away for them to reach. And so they set off to journey home once more. Ahead of them spread the news of their successes. News that eventually reached the ears of their father, Ragnar Lothbrok. And then he was thrown into the air and landed on the back of the cat and broke its back and died. That seems highly unlikely. <laughs> it's a God's honest truth, my lord. What did Ivar do next? Well, my lady, after we killed the devil cow, Ivar fought King Eystein in a hugely unlikely but accurately recreated duel to the death. How did he do that? I mean, the boy's got no bones in his legs. Ragnar! You should be pleased your son is achieving such glory. I am pleased for him. But... Well, I haven't done anything glorious for ages. All my stuff in this episode has been political wrangling, or you just shouting at me. You can't be glorying all the time, husband. You have to let the children leave the nest eventually. But it's my saga. I feel like I peeked at slaying the dragon. Slaying the dragon? I mean, marrying you. My darling. Better. You, messenger. <laughs> yes, Lord Ragnar. Go and tell all who will hear that I, Ragnar Lothbrok, will be invading England. Wowie, wow! Crikey, you're going to need a massive army, husband. That's what you'd think, Aslog. Randolin. What? My name is Randolin. Oh, you're sticking with that, are you? Okay, well... You might think I'd invade England with a massive army, but no. I'm going to invade England with only two ships. That's not enough ships. Exactly. It'll be all the more glorious when I do it. That'll show my stupid sons who's the best at being a Viking. I really do think you should go with more ships. No. This is the Ragnar saga, and I'm taking back the narrative. Onwards to victory! Well, at least... Take this shirt made of my hair. It'll make you basically invulnerable. Invulnerable? Nice. That'll come in handy. And come in handy it did. Ragnar invaded England with his two ships and immediately found that two ships was nowhere near enough ships to do any conquering at all. He and his men were almost immediately surrounded by the army of King Aella of Northumberland. My lord... We are surrounded. Turns out two ships were nowhere near it. Ah! Uh oh. Lord Ragnar, the Saxon king has sent in his elite troops. There are too many of them. If only we had brought the sensible about them. Men, now is the time for glory. Now we will. Men? Men? Oh dear. All of your men are dead, Northmen. Perhaps more than two ships would have been a good idea. Agreed. This midlife crisis has taken a turn. Men, shoot him with arrows until he's dead. But the arrows bounce from Ragnar's magic vest and do him no harm. What the deuce? Your Saxon arrows cannot harm me. I am protected by the old gods. Are you now? Men, throw him in the snake pit. Ragnar is grabbed and thrown into a pit of snakes. <gasps> and now, just to wait for the snakes to bite this nameless but strangely invulnerable Viking. Oh, I'm a lord. Look, the snakes. Oh, they're biting him like, oh, but he's still alive. Well, thank you, Mr. Explains a lot. After all, I don't have any eyes. Ah, oh, says King. I was just trying to help. Like, there's no need to be unpleasant. Hang on a minute. Oh, it's his blooming shirt, isn't it? Oi, Viking. What? Is that a magic shirt made out of the single grey hair of a witch? No. I knew it. 
Right, take your stupid shirt off so the snakes can bite you properly. No. You soldier, climb into the pit and remove his shirt. Tell uh, you what, honest, I'll give you a hand. Oh, down there! Oh. oh man, oh man, oh man, there's a lot of snakes in here. Ow! Ow! Here, here man, quick, give us your shirt so I can get out of here. If you want it, lad, you're gonna have to come and take it. Oh, come on, come on, please. Ow! Oh, come, come and take it, give it here. Oh, oh, this is really mature. Oh, you're impressing everyone, I can tell you. If you're not giving me your shirt, stop, stop doing that tit weird thing. It's time for you to give me your shirt. Stop it. Ow. Ah, oh, the snakes keep biting at me. Oh, man, this is a nightmare. Oh, stop milking it and get a shirt off. I'm not milking it. This is for real. It's difficult. Ow. Ow, the snakes, they keep biting me like. Eventually, Ragnar's magic shirt was taken from him. Ah, ow, right, there you go, that's for you, I think I'm just going to have to have a little a lie uh, down. Right then, mysterious viking with no name, let's see how you get on without your stupid shirt. Oh yes, sir, that's done the trick. Oh, yeah, the snakes are definitely, oh, yeah. Biting me now. That'll teach you to invade England with only two ships. What a stupidly small amount of ships. How did you possibly think that was ever going to work? But anyway, any last words? Oh, yes. Oh, I've got some oh, last words. How the piglets would squeal if they could see the old boar now. Oh. What's that supposed to mean? It means my sons are going to be oh, really annoyed with you for killing oh, their father. And why should I care what your sons think, nameless Viking? The only sons I'd not want to annoy are the sons of Ragnar Lothbrok. Bingo. Oh no, you're not Ragnar Lothbrok, are you? The very same. My lads are going to mess you up. Oh, man, quick, get Ragnar out of the pit before you... <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Um, we might be in a spot of bother, lad. And in a spot of bother they were. When the Ragnar sons learned of their father's untimely death by snake pit at the hands of King Aella of Northumbria, they immediately raised a massive army and invaded England. An invasion that would change the course of British history. And one that contains far too much content for us to cover in this episode. We shall return to the tale of Ivar the Boneless and the Sons of Ragnar. And Aslaug. Cracker. Randolin. Same thing. We shall return to their tale another time, dear listener. But until then, we have been... The Silly History Boy Show! For all the name changing, continuing rampant embellishment, and terrible beef puns, we are, as ever, sorry! sorry! Ragnar Lothbrok 2. Is that a rag? Nah. Or episode 54 of the Silly History Boy Show was written and produced by the Silly History Boys. And now, my friends, I shall cast me runes in order to tell you the cast. In no particular order that kicking us off, it's gristle-legged tactical mastermind Ivor the Boneless, Cockney Swedish soldier, a very embattled warrior the second, a snaked up Saxon warrior, and all of these were hollowed out and sailed to Greenland by me, your dear Uncle Bob Bob. The parts of heroic Norse warrior named Hvitsirk Ragnarsson, a perennially grumpy archer, a very Clinton-esque Hide the Cigars King Einstein of Sweden, a messenger, and a very embattled warrior were played by Will Lofsmiter Tristram, our dear Uncle Bilbo. We do hope that you are feeling much better. The parts of heroic Viking warrior and former ABBA frontman Bjorn, plus a very inspired casting as Eric Ragnarsson, 
get it. And King Ayala of Northumbria, he's in trouble now, were carved into the living rock of your ears by Stu the Pear Bear Perry. Or the O'Runes, that's, that's what we're going with there. The parts of Cracker, Aslo, Randolin, no, oh, actually the same part, but hey, it looks good written down, and they looked good in your ears, and they were voiced by the silliest of all the silly girls. It's Gemma Velma Von Bon Bon. Thanks very much for your voices, Gemma. Rondvald Ragnarsson was played by troubled child superstar Harry Hazmat Perbe. An IO Hazmat, an apology. I woke him up when I visited. Let's see if he's got 9.30. So you're not getting one, Hazza. You're not getting one. Now it's time to get up, mate. It's time to get up. It's time to get up and see your favourite uncle, your dear Uncle Bob Bob. I didn't want to mention it on the day, but it was my birthday. It, it was my birthday. Thank you, Harrison. And last, but by no means least, warming up as a Viking babysitter, progressing up to messenger, and then unfalling his full alpha all over Yo's ears, it's Tom, Tom Bofermo, as the titular and angular hero, Ragnar Lothbrok. As always, may the nice people at zapsplat.com feast forever in the halls of Valhalla, in gratitude for the, all their sound effects and music. Uh, also, additional thanks to Lumin Media for their track Cyberpunk and a great glittering pile of blood-stained, ill-gotten thanks to Big Scotty Buckley of Scott Buckley Music for his brilliant tracks. Thank you very much, Scott, for your music. As always, if you wish to follow the further adventures of the Silly History Boys, you can check us out on all the socials. We're at Silly History Boys Show on Facebook at SHB underscore show on Twitter and Silly History Boys Show on Instagram. But to be honest with you, if you Google Silly History Boys Show, then all 54, 55, I said it about two minutes ago, all 55 odd of our podcasts will appear in your ears. And don't worry, we will be back live in October for more excitement-based things. But for now, let's do the... Let's do the I tell you what, it was a big old summer. It was a big old summer. It was lots of fun. And thank you very, very much indeed to anyone who came to Warpwood Castle, um, to Old Sarum, to Stonehenge, to to Dover Castle. We were there as well. I, you, you might have seen me and Elton. You might have seen me and Bilbo at Beeston. You might have seen Tom at any number of places, including Annick Castle, the, the Harry Potter Castle. Um, we had a wonderful summer and thank you very much if you came to see us or if you met us during the summer as well. Um, for now, I am your dear Uncle Bob Bob and this has been the Silly History Boys Show. Ah, it is nice to be back making noises again though. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Vitzek, hand me my bow. It is time to enact my grand strategy. Otherwise, people will be calling me Ivar the Bowlers. I lost faith in that halfway through. I pray you don't use it.